as we have all said many times, is great pride and great humility that we undertook this great act of patriotism that occurred on the House floor tonight. It honored the vows of our founders for us to be a land of opportunity all the way back to before we were a country in the Declaration of Independence talking about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That defines opportunity. So, too, did this bill tonight. Opportunity for high, uh, affordable education, lower the cost of higher education, that's one part of the bill. And the other part of the bill, the main part of the bill, uh, to uh, provide quality, affordable health care for all Americans, enabling people to have the freedom, to have life, a healthier life, to have the liberty to pursue their own happiness. They could change jobs without losing health care. They can become self-employed. They could start a small business. They could follow their passion. And wouldn't that be great for them and for our economy and for our society? So we believe that this act that was passed tonight is an all-American act, honoring our founders' vows to, to the future and honoring our commitment to the future by making it a healthier one and a fiscally sound one. 32 million more Americans having access to health care, $1.3 trillion saved for the taxpayer and accountability for the insurance companies so they cannot come between patients and their doctors. This happened because we had uh, the leadership of the President of the United States as a visionary, as a, as a strategist, and as a persuader. It happened because in the House, uh, our, our leadership worked not as a team, but as a close partnership and, in and with teamwork with all of the members, uh, the Democratic members of the House. Now we send the bill uh, to the Senate, and I salute uh, Senator Reid for his leadership in bringing uh, the Senate, uh, Senate members together, majority of the Senate, around this legislation. And so with, again, humility and pride, and great optimism for what will happen in the next week. I am pleased to yield to our distinguished majority leader. Without his leadership and strategic thinking, uh, this evening and success would not be possible. I could say that about Mr. Clyburn, not counter. Do you like that 220? <laughs> a lot of bets were made on the number. It was sort of like a pool. No money exchanged hands up court. Steny. For all of you who pursued all of us, we had the votes. <laughs> I was a second year law student in 1965, just a few blocks from here, Georgetown Law School. And the dean of the house, who served over a half a century, was in the chair. And he lifted a gavel and brought it down to announce to the House of Representatives that Medicare had been adopted. He is here with us today, John Dingle. <clears throat> And he will be our cleanup hitter. <laughs> but this morning, he came forward in the caucus with a gavel in hand and delivered it to our speaker, the single most responsible person for this night's success, <laughs> Speaker Nancy Pelosi. <clears throat> and she tonight gaveled a continuation of that commitment to ensure that all Americans have access to affordable, quality health care. Tonight, or this morning, is not for speeches. It is to savor the victory, not a party, nor of this leadership, but for the American people. <clears throat> 